almost everyone has heard of the Men in Black, whether that's from the popular film or the real deal. And all stories seem to start with someone who has been researching or witnessed a UFO or an extraterrestrial. They get approached by a man or a group of strange men dressed in black suits who warn them not to speak of their event. Well, here are five times where people have apparently been approached by these mysterious undercover people and have since gone on to tell of their encounters. Albert K. Bender Albert Bender's encounter with the men in black is one of the world's most popular. He was in the US Air Force during World War II, was the founder of the International Flying Saucer Bureau, and also the editor of a small publication called The Space Review. He became obsessed with UFOs and researched tirelessly for evidence to prove their existence. In 1953, he made a series of discoveries that led him to believe that he'd finally found the truth about a serious UFO cover-up. Excited by what he had discovered, he wrote a report and intended to publish his findings in The Space Review. Until one day, he claims he was visited by three men dressed in black suits who warned him to stop his UFO research and threatened him with prison if he published his findings or told anyone else. Bender was so scared at how they knew of his findings and by the visit that he immediately shut down his bureau, closed his space review publication and ceased all active involvement with the world of UFOs. In an interview with a local newspaper at the time, Bender said the encounter left him scared for his life and unable to sleep or eat for days after his meeting. It's been said that Bender was a changed man after the encounter. He suffered terrible headaches that would almost knock him out and refused to talk about what had happened. There was also a time when he received a strange phone call whilst alone one time. He answered but no one was on the other end talking, but he could sense someone was definitely there. He said his head began spinning and throbbing and he felt something telling him that he should stop messing around and researching UFOs. He then heard a strange humming sound before the call ended. A few years later in 1963, Albert spoke more about his encounter with what he called the silencers in a book called Flying Saucers and Three Men in Black. But the details of what he revealed were vague and the book was regarded as strange and unreadable that revealed very little in the way of credible facts much different from his intelligent publications before his encounter. It did show and start the theories though that some men in black could actually be extraterrestrials. It seems that if Bender did indeed have an encounter with those three men, they sure did keep him quiet and had a serious effect on him. He refused to discuss flying saucers with anyone and those who knew him said he just wasn't the same man. Albert K. Bender took most of his secrets to his grave when he passed away in 2002. The Maury Island Incident The Maury Island Incident takes place with Harold Dahl on June the 21st, 1947. He was on a fishing boat with his son and some other people when out of nowhere they saw six donut-shaped objects hovering in the sky above them. The men quickly returned back to shore where Dahl took some photographs and they all witnessed one of the crafts dropping what looked like hot molten metal into the water. As this mysterious substance hit the water, some splashed onto the beach and unfortunately killed Harold's dog and badly burned his son. After taking his son to the hospital, Dal told his boss Fred Chrisman what had happened and gave him the camera. Chrisman developed the film and although they vaguely showed the strange airships, the prints were poor and covered in black spots so Chrisman did not believe Dal's story. Despite his doubts, Chrisman went to Maury Island to gather some rocks to sample and whilst there, he claims to have witnessed something that backed up Dal's story. He saw an unidentified object circling above him as if it was observing what he was doing. But it was actually the day after this when things got interesting. Harold said that after his sighting, he was visited by a man in a black suit who suggested they go to breakfast together to talk. Dal drove his car following this man's all black Buick to a nearby restaurant. They ordered breakfast and as they were eating, the man gave Dal a highly detailed account of what had happened to him the day before, talking about the UFOs and the unknown substance that was poured into the water. The man didn't ask Harold any questions, but when he had finished recalling the incident, he warned Dal that bad things would happen to him and his family if he told anyone about what he had witnessed. Harold told Chrisman of the encounter and they both kept quiet until years later they sent some residue from the incident and a detailed letter of the event to a magazine publisher. The magazine founder and a UFO investigator 
met with Dell and Chrisman to discuss what had happened. Not long after, two Army Air Corps officers were sent to interview the men and investigate the scene, but on their way back from the investigation, their plane mysteriously crashed and both men died. It's been said that on board the plane, the two officers had some of the strange metal substance that Dal had collected, and also the photographs that he took that day. This led people to think that the plane was shot down in an attempt to cover up what was found. An Air Force and FBI investigation was launched, and both thought that Dal and Chrisman had hoaxed the incident. They were told to confess, or else they would be prosecuted for the resulting death of two officers. They both dropped the case, but years later, Chrisman said that everything that had happened was not faked. Some people believe it was all a hoax that went too far, and resulted in the deaths of two men, and others believe it did indeed happen, and Dal was confronted by a man in black, who somehow knew the exact details of the event just the day after. One thing's for sure though, the FBI and the Air Force had some serious interest in the matter, and it makes you think that if both knew the men in black are fake, then surely, once Dal said he was confronted by one, they would have known he was faking the story and wouldn't have paid any interest. It's definitely a strange case that leaves you wondering whether the men in black are real or not, but if they are, then how did the man know of Dal's event so quickly, before he even had a chance to make it public? Sitting in a room was a physicist, a biophysicist, a retired professor of electrical engineering, a retired aircraft developer, a physician, and a polymer scientist. They all sat looking at Peter Rogeswiz, a respected professor of humanities and folklore at New York's Juilliard School. For years, he had kept his encounter with the Men in Black a secret, fearing ridicule and disbelief from his peers, until he finally revealed the details of his strange encounter to the crowd. The professor claims, back in 1980, he was reading a UFO book in the University of Pennsylvania Library when a man sat next to him. The professor said that it was as if the man had just dropped from the ceiling as he did not see or hear him come in. He was described as a gaunt, pale man around six foot tall who was wearing a black suit, black shoes, black string tie and a white shirt. The man started a conversation about flying saucers but appeared hostile when the professor said he wasn't really that interested in them. The man replied by saying, flying saucers are the most important fact of the century and you're not interested. The professor claims he had to calm the man down as he became extremely agitated. The man in black then left, but before he went, he put his hand on the professor's shoulder and said, go well on your purpose. The professor said he was overwhelmed by fear and felt there was just something not right with this man, which left him terrified by the encounter. After finally breaking his silence, most of the audience believed his story, and the professor has since spent his years making contact with others who have had experiences with the men in black. Although this story is unlike the others, as Peter did not witness a UFO, and was only reading about them, he is confident in what he is told, and believes that it was a real men in black official who confronted him in that library. You have all probably seen this photograph. It was taken in May of 1964 by a Cumberland fireman named Jim Templeton at Bergmarsh. Little did Jim know that the photo would create headlines around the world, and even now it's still featured in articles and many YouTube videos. It's known as the Solway Firth Spaceman, and is a photo of his five-year-old daughter sat on the grass with what looks like a spaceman in the background. Jim swears that no one was in the area who was dressed like that, and decided to take the photograph to the local police station. They then sent the picture to Kodak, who in turn analysed and confirmed that the camera and the photograph had not been tampered with in any way. They even offered a reward to anyone who could prove it was fake, which has never been claimed. Jim Templeton was receiving letters from all over the world, and the media attention was relentless, but then came his visit. He claimed two men dressed in dark matching suits came to the fire station where he was working and introduced themselves as government officials, codenamed number 9 and number 10. He said the men only referred to each other by their numbers and refused to give their names, but they did show an identification badge with a crest and the word security on it. They asked him to take them to Bergmarsh and point out exactly where the photo of his daughter was taken. Jim directed them and was driven to the site in a dark coloured car. He said they seemed to have no knowledge of the area, leading him to believe they were not local. Once they all reached the area, the pair asked numerous questions about the day the photo was taken, 
such as any witnesses, what the weather was like and other related questions. Then they quickly accused him of making the whole thing up and got back into their car. Jim thought they were just going to turn the car around, but they sped off and left him there. He never saw the men again, but this isn't the end of it. The story gets even stranger, and this next bit is probably worthy for another video, but not long after his encounter, a technician who worked at the Woomera rocket launch site in Australia, where they were testing the Blue Streak missiles, contacted Jim. He had seen the photo and told Jim that he and some colleagues had seen two unknown figures identical to the figure in Jim's photo on the security cameras at the launch pad, which resulted in the test being aborted. All this happened only a couple of hours after Jim took his photo in England, and strangely the Blue Streak missiles were manufactured at an RAF site just 20 miles from where Jim took the famous photo. It could all just be a coincidence, but it sure does add to the mystery. A year or so later, Jim went back to the original site to take some more photos, and when he picked them up from the same photo developers, they had a note attached to them saying they couldn't be processed. This happened a few times until Jim gave a different name and then they came back developed. Now again, this could just be a coincidence, but it sure is strange. It's certainly an odd story and one that is not always told with the Solway Firth photograph, which has since sort of been debunked as being Jim's wife, who he was unaware of. But if Jim's Men in Black encounter was real, then it seems they didn't want to scare him like most encounters as the story was already known worldwide. They just seemed to want to know a little more information that maybe no one else but Jim knew. Dan Aykroyd is most famous for his role in Ghostbusters and the Blues Brothers, but what a lot of people may not know is that he is an expert on UFOs. He grew up in a family who openly discussed paranormal and unexplained topics, and his grandfather was a mystic and spiritualist, so this is where his love of the unexplained started. In 2005, his interest was captured in a documentary called Dan Aykroyd Unplugged, which showed the world his true passion for UFOs. In it, Aykroyd revealed the depth of his knowledge and intense interest in that field, and a lot of people were surprised with his experiences. He shared many of his stories and beliefs, but one of the most interesting was his encounter with what he believes were the men in black. Aykroyd was in the middle of making a television program in New York City, and was stood outside taking a break, talking on the phone to Britney Spears about appearing on Saturday Night Live. He looked across and seen some men in black suits standing next to a black Ford car just down the road. Thinking nothing of it, he carried on with his conversation, but saw a very tall man get out from the back seat who gave him a very intimidating stare. He turned away, still on the phone, and seconds later turned back to look at the car again, but it had vanished. Dan knows what he saw and said the car vanished into thin air. Dan then returned to the TV set he was working on, which just so happened to be about UFOs, that featured an interview with a man who had acquired a large amount of credible witnesses, including retired military officers who claimed they had witnessed UFOs. Strangely enough, two hours after his Men in Black sighting, the TV program was shut down and they were told that none of the footage would be aired. The show was of course never finished and the evidence that was going to be featured remains unheard. Dan Aykroyd's story is definitely one of the most credible and strangest out there that really gets you wondering, are we being kept in the dark about the highly secretive men in black? So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed and next week is going to be the start of some real creepy videos for October. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.